שבת שלום. חג שמח, שנה טובה. Welcome all of you, welcome all of you wherever you are. We invite you to enter the sanctuary, the TVZ sanctuary with us. We're here with Aviva, Noah, and Yoni, and myself here too. You're filling this sanctuary for all of us. And even though you are um, behind a screen, we can feel you, we can see you, and we hope we can come into your home, to your Mikdash Me'at, to your sanctuary today, and be together in this moment, in this liminal moment of bringing the year together. Before we begin, um, reminder, if you don't know by now with Zoom, that uh, the best way to be able to really be present in the sanctuary is for you to put your camera in speaker view. Now, if what you want to do is look at people around, uh, then you go to gallery view, and then you can see everybody that has come to the sanctuary. But if you want uh, to see what's happening here in the sanctuary, uh, you can click on speaker view. Our usher tonight is Jed Sugarman. Thank you, Jed, for being our usher. And as an usher, he can put, he'll, he has been putting already the Marzor in the chat. If you get lost at some point, I, don't, I forgot to announce a page, he can tell you. And he'll be doing the normal job of the usher, making sure you feel welcome today in our sanctuary. Uh, we are here and we are singing without masks. So I want to reassure you that we all tested negative in the last couple of days. We all got tested to be able to be able to be able to be here and sing together without masks. So all our Shlichet Sivor, all the people we'll be leading in the next two days with us took tests, COVID tests uh, yesterday and today and we are ready to be able to sing and lift up our voices and be safe uh, this Rosh Hashanah. So I invite you for a moment to settle and to arrive and to be here as we receive Shabbat and Rosh Hashanah together. And remind ourselves that it is in Shabbat at this time when we open the gates the gates are open in heavens for all our prayers and we open our hearts and we begin this journey together. If you have your candles, I invite you to light them, prepare them. I'm going to come here to the ark to light our candles together. And if you have them, we'll be saying the blessing of Shabbat and Yom Tev. I need new matches at TVZ. Ah, oh, here it is. The first fire of this year. It's not coming easy. It's taking its time here. Let's take a moment with your candles or with the candles here to close your eyes or look at the light and bring your prayers, open your heart. The gates are open for us, for anything, for everything in our hearts. Holy one of blessings, your presence fills creation. Your presence fills creation. Oh, 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 oh. Your presence fills creation. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Eloheinu Melech Hola, 
Shabbat Shalom, Shana Tova, Good Shabbos, Good Yom Tev. And we begin our service on page one with our Kavana. Hareini mekabelet alai et mitzvat avode ve'avta l'reacha kamocha. I take upon myself the obligation, the mitzvah, of loving my neighbor as I love myself. And we say this all the time, but there's no year, there is no time, at least for me, that this mitzvah has become more important and more real. If there's one thing we have learned in the last six months, it's about the interconnectedness of all human beings. That when I take care of myself, I take care of you. When I take care of you, I take care of myself. Pirkei Avot says, you all know this one. If I am not for myself, who will be for me? But if I am only for myself, who am I? If not now, when? Im ein ani li, mi li. Ukshani le atmi, ma ani. Vim lo akshav e matai. With that kavana, we remind ourselves of the mitzvah, a mitzvah that I hope will guide us not only this Rosh Hashanah, but this new year with blessing, with health, with sweetness. <laughs> Just imagine us, and I hope you did the same, walking around and schmoozing and kissing and hugging, like we often do when we share this kavana. And though we can't do that physically now, no, we are doing that. We are schmoozing and kissing and hugging, because <laughs> that's what we do at TVZ, and that's what we bring the year together. I'm going to introduce you to a new song that we haven't brought to TVZ before. And this is a poem, a liturgical poem, a Sephardic liturgical poem, which is a love poem that is sung on Erev Rosh Hashanah, on the eve of Rosh Hashanah. It's called Achot Ketana, it's on page two on your Machzor. 
And the little sister, Achot Ktana, is a metaphor for the people of Israel who speaks to her beloved God. And it's a poem that describes darkness, the darkness of ex exile, and the wishes of redemption. So with that, we wish redemption as we come from this exile of darkness. Page two, Achot Ketana. <laughs> Oh, 
there's no year that this blessing comes more. Let the year and its curses conclude. Tichle shana bekilelotea. Tachel shana ubirchotea. Let the year and its blessings begin. And we bring Shabbat in, page four, Lecha Adadi. Shabbat out to the world.
it's so good to be grateful, to practice gratitude. We take a moment to say thank you. Lift up anything you feel grateful for today. Say it out loud. Say it to the person sitting next to you. Say it, say it out loud. Say it. We can hear it. Even if we can't physically hear it, we can hear the gratitude. Ms. Morshir Leom, Shabbat, page five. Crown with majesty as our wish, splendor, nachon, kisechan, olam, atah. Migolot ma'im, rabim, adirim, ishvere, yam, adir, v'amarom, adonai, borom of page five. As you are
You may be seated, page six. ברוך אתה אדוני אלינו לכולם, אשר יפעד רמה לי ברבים. בחוכמה פותח שערים ובתמונה משנה עתים, ומחליב את הזמנים ומסדר את הכוכבים במשמרותיהם, ורקק את שונו, ובורא יום ולילה גוללו על מבני חושך לחושך מבני יום. הוא מעביר יום, הוא מביא לילה. הוא מבדיל בין יום ובין לילה, אדוני צבאות שמו אל חי וקיים. תמיד אמלוך עלינו לעולם בעת, ברוך אתה אדוני. people is well teaching us Torah and mitzvot. <laughs> In the middle of page 9, Umalchuto Baratzon, the blessing of Geula. Umalchuto Baratzon, Kibulu Alehem Moshe. Thank <laughs> you. 
Please join me as we read together in English on page 10. Help us to lie down, dear one, our God, in peace, and let us rise again, our sovereign, to life. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Decree for us a worthy daily Lord and redeem us for the sake of your great name. And enfold us in the wings of your protections, for you are our redeeming guardian. Truly a sovereign, gracious, and compassionate God are you. God are going, guard are going forth each day for life and peace, now and always. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. We rise for the Shamru, page ten, middle of the page. Beshamru. Far at the new moon, at the time designated for our festival day. This is a statue of Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. Tiku Bachodesh, middle of page 10. Tiku Bachodesh, Page 11. 
בחייכון, וביום אכון, ובחיי דכל בית ישראל, בגלו בזמן קריב אמרו אמן. יש מרבה מברך, לעולם התברך והשתבח והתפאר ויתרומם והתנשא ויתדר ויתלה ויתלל שמד הקודשה בדיחו ללה וללה מכל ברכתה ושירתה תוש בחטא ונחמתה, דמי דם בעלמה, ואימרו אמן. דמי דה, סיילנלי, פייג'ס 12-17, אני מבקש לך לעשות את זה בזמן, או לעשות את הדברים של העמידה במחזור, או לעשות את זה במדיטציה, אם אתה רוצה לעשות את זה, תעשה את זה. Take a moment, close your eyes, sit straight on your chair or stand with your feet on the ground to lift up your prayers from your heart. If you're doing the words of the Amidah, remember it's also Shabbat to add the special parts for Shabbat. בספר חיים ברכה ושלום ופרנסה טובה מי זכר As you know, it is our practice always to have people share with us personal prayers during our services for all our high holidays. We have been doing this for a long time. We're blessed to be able to do this this year. Um, 
they recorded this before. It will look like they are here with us. We'll see it in a moment. So I am excited to welcome Rachel Goodman, who will be sharing now with us her personal prayer for this Rosh Hashanah. Yet, I discovered surprising ways in which, in my mouth and in my heart, I am closer to God, Torah, and the mitzvot. I don't remember how I... In thinking about the phrase from Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 14, it is close to you, in your mouth and in your heart to observe. I am flooded with thoughts. Since mid-March, I, like you, have been practicing physical distancing from those closest to my heart. Yet, I discovered surprising ways in which, in my mouth and in my heart, I am closer to God, Torah, and the mitzvot. I don't remember how I started attending Boker Tov TBZ. Regardless, I started davening most mornings, Monday through Friday. The practice wasn't completely foreign to me, since as a child, my grandfather, whose talit I am wearing, taught me to recite Moda'ani. While I had stopped saying it for many years, I recently began again, and it became my way of showing gratitude to Elohim for returning my soul to me. But I had a dilemma, since my grandfather's tune is different from the one we use at Boker Tov TBZ. How to connect with the memory of my grandfather while being with TBZ community. Simple, I say moda ani with my family's tune when I wake up, and when I join Boker Tov TBZ, I switch to TBZ's melody. I find comfort in being able to combine both aspects of my davening practice. Our Boker Tov TBZ has also become a way that I can balance the need for physical distancing from our community with the feeling of closeness to our TBZ community and to Adonai. In the beginning, I found the morning ritual comforting as it also reminded me of my father's daily practice of davening before breakfast. Believe me when I say that I never expected that that would become a part of my life. But each morning when I join the Zoom, I feel that I am connecting with my father and our ancestors as I use my father's siddur to recite the Amidah and the Mourner's Kaddish. And I am experiencing new and powerful connections to these prayers, which I've been reciting for almost 65 years. But now they are bringing me a new sense of comfort and closeness. In the beginning of davening with our Boker Tov TBZ group, I didn't really know a lot of the members well. So I didn't contribute when Rav Claudia invited us to share what we were grateful for. But over time, I have gotten to know people better and I look forward to our group. I feel close and connected to everyone in unexpected ways for which I am thankful. So I say, Yehi Ratzon Milfanecha, may it be your will, Adonai, that in the coming months, you will bring us close to you as we continue to find our way in this COVID moment.
Shana, Tuva, Yisher Koach, Rachel, thank you for your beautiful, inspiring personal prayer. I stand here today and I miss you. I want to take a moment as we welcome the year in this unprecedented way to embrace the sadness of this moment. I am here with Noah, Aviva, and Yoni in a space empty of people. This sanctuary is filled with cameras and lights, but you are not here. The sanctuary has a screen to show me your beautiful faces, the sanctuary is physically empty, but it is spiritually full. You are far away, but I can feel your presence. You are close and you are far. I am close and I am far. I long for your presence. I feel the blessing of what exists and I feel the grief for what is absent. I feel this way about each of you who are joining us from different places in the Boston area and beyond. I feel this way about God lately, too. At moments, I can feel the presence of God. At moments, I feel close to God, and at others, very far away. At moments I drift away from God and at moments I long for God's presence. The verse that we just sang and that we will, guide, will be guiding us these holy days is from Deuteronomy 13, 30, 14. Kikarov elecha adavar meod beficha ubilbabcha la asoto because the matter is very close to you, in your mouth and in your heart to do it. And I wonder what is, what is close to us? How do we experience closeness in times where we must be physically distant from each other to be safe? What does closeness and intimacy mean during a time of physical separation? How do we embrace this moment and create new possibilities for closeness? In my junior year in high school, I traveled with my classmates to the Atacama Desert in North Chile, a 41,000 square mile area of stony terrain, salt lakes called salares and sand. We would drive on our bus for hours and still be in the desert. One day, in the middle of one such long drive, the bus broke down. We were in the middle of nowhere. A new bus would take several hours to arrive and our teachers let us wander about while we waited. As I walked farther from the bus, people became so small and when I couldn't see the bus anymore, I realized the great desert vastness and the feeling of being unable to see what is beyond. I love the desert. I love it because of its vastness. It also evokes in me a sense of fear, a lack of control of what is beyond that I must admit is not easy for me to embrace. Our tradition tells us that Torah was given in the wilderness, and the question is why. The Midrash explains anyone who does not make oneself as open as the wilderness is not able to acquire wisdom and Torah. The word used to describe the wilderness is efker, which means ownerless. In another word, anyone who does not make one self-ownerless is not ready to receive Torah. So what does it mean to make ourselves as open or ownerless as the wilderness? 
Rabbi Sharon Cohen Anisfeld, president of Hebrew College, dear friend and CBZ member, share with me her understanding of F care, saying, making yourself F care ownerless is the capacity to be in a state of open heartedness to that which we cannot control. To be ownerless is to hold uncertainty and be open to what comes to us with surprise and no judgment. Six months into this pandemic, we continue to walk in this long, exhausting journey where there's no clear view of an end. It feels like the vastness of the wilderness. And I know that for me, it definitely evokes fear at times. During 40 years of wandering the desert, the people of Israel could not know the end of the story, their wanderings to come. They must have been filled with questions and fears. For us, in the middle of our own wanderings and unexpected journey, we too are filled with questions, simple and profound ones. When will my kids go back to school as they used to? How long until I can hug my grandchildren? Will my business survive? Is my paycheck secure? When can we return to our sanctuary? How will our government and our country hold together? Will November bring us new leadership, one with moral values and a new hope for some better future for all, us, all of us? When we will sing together again? The American Tibetan Buddhist Pema Chodron in her book, When Things Fall Apart, writes, things falling apart is a kind of testing and also a kind of healing. We think that the point of is to pass the test to overcome the problem. But the truth is that things don't really get solved. They come together and they fall apart. Then they come together again and fall apart again. It is just like that. The healing comes from letting there be room for all this to happen. Room for grief, for relief, for misery, for joy. I find these words to be real to this moment. Yes, I would prefer a message to sex, things are not falling apart. But I want to invite you to open this new year with the intention of letting there be room for all that is to happen. The grief, the relief, the misery, and the joy. Perhaps making ourselves ownerless, scared, means to allow ourselves to be in this uncertainty with an open heart for what it can bring. When we allow ourselves to be open for what is, we also remember to be open to each other. We are not alone on this journey. We are not isolated in our wandering. We stand with each other. We stand with you. And we stand together. How do we walk in a time where the vastness, the intensity is so big that we cannot see the bus that will take us back home? by reminding ourselves that even when it feels far and scary, we are close and we are not alone. Ki karov elecha adavar meod veficha uvilvavcha laasoto. The matter is very close to you, in your mouth and your heart to do it. Our tradition our community, the values that we stand for, they are in us and close to us. They are in our mouth and in our hearts. We have this community, we have each other, and we are part of something bigger than us. God is in all of us and we are in God. 
And even though at times it is hard for us to see and find and feel the blessings of God's presence, God is ready to embrace us. God is able to hold us, hold our tears, our sorrow, and our longing. Earlier today, we sang a piyut, a liturgical poem that they had the words, Tichle shana vekilelotea, tachel shana ubirchotea. Let the year and its curses conclude. Let the year and its blessings begin. We do not know what this year will bring. We really don't. And that can be really scary. But I also know that if we, each of us open our hearts and lean into closeness, new blessings might flow for us this year. Ken Yehiratzon, may it be your will. Amen. Shana Tova. Amen. 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 You are able to rise for Aleinu, page 19. <laughs> Mourner's Kaddish on page 21. If you're mourning or commemorating a yard side or your custom is to rise for the Mourner's Kaddish, please do so. Page 21. 
We are waiting. We are looking for Ramoshe. 
We'll get him in a second. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, here we found Okay, you. we got it. Sorry. Here you are. Apologize. Rev Moshe, here you are. Okay. Okay, friends. Uh, Wait a minute. What just happened? Okay. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. What did you do? Here we go. Here you go. Okay. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. My friends, first of all, it's wonderful to be with all of you, even in this very strange way. But we are pleased that we have the opportunity of being together on Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the year. So our greetings from my family, for all of us, is that we have a year of peace and a year of health. And uh, I'd like to make Kiddush and then uh, do the traditional eating of the apples and honey. So for Kiddush, if uh, you rise, that's fine. If not, that's also fine. My custom is to sit. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, bore peri agape. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, asher b'chabanu mikol ha'am, v'rememanu mikol ha'am, v'kidishanu mitzvotam, v'atiten lanu l'oleheinu b'yava, et yom ha'shabat hazeh, v'et yom ha'zikaron hazeh, yom zikron t'ruah me'yava, m'eklot kodesh, zeich eretziat mitzrayim, Ivan Uvachar Tavyotanu Kidash Taimi Kola Mim Udevarcha Emet Vekayam Lad Baruchat Tahadurai Melech Al Kolares Vekadesh Shabbat Yisrael Beyom Azikaron Baruchat Tahadurai Elohim Melech Olam Shechayahanu Vekiyimanu Veigiyanu Lahazman Hazeh Amen What we say when we dip the apple into the honey is that the new year that we begin should be indeed a sweet one and wish us all the possibilities that are yet to come. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Umituka. Shana Tova, Ramosha, Shana Tova, and Shana Tova, uh, the whole Wild Dogs family. It's great to have you this way here, and Ramosha will be joining us tomorrow, leading services from the sanctuary. So we'll conclude services now. I know we went longer of what we announced. We are learning this whole thing. Tomorrow we will stay on time. We just need to make it very real, very TBZ. Running late is part of the TBZ thing. You know, it's always we need a little more moments to get to it. And um, thank you for being here. We are excited to spend the next two days with you. We begin tomorrow morning at 8.30. If you want to be the contemplative Bikorta Shachar with Rabbi Carol Glass. Um, if you're not into contemplative, you're more into schmoozing, you can schmooze <laughs> with Eddie Tav and Kathy Cates will be leading schmoozing. So either if your preference in the morning is chatting, 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 or your preference in the morning is a little silence. We have both, and then we'll begin Shacharit at 9 a.m. with gratitude, tremendous gratitude to Aviva, Yoni, and Noah. And uh, behind the cameras, we have wonderful John Bremer, who is really managing everything. Uh, he is a godsend, so we are very grateful that he's here with us. Shana. Oh, <laughs>
Ooh. 